Hello everybody, it's it's Sunday the 3rd of February 2013, it's either the 3rd or the 4th, and as you can see, the snow is falling once again. Haha. <laughs> anyway, I'm I'm just here here in the studio. I've just got a little bit of finishing off of some pots I'd made over the last over the last day or so and um, yeah I was just just trimming here a tea bowl so I thought well <laughs> sometimes at the weekend there's a time to finish work off isn't it put a bit of this green stuff here on the top of this and uh, it does it does help I think when doing tea bowls, um, I think when doing these kind of tea bowls, that in order to get some feeling into the work, rather than the tea bowl coming off of the wheel looking like it's come off of a, you know, a production line as it were, to get some individuality, some character, some feeling, you know, into it. Um, you have to sort of develop your own methodology, uh, how to do that. And um, what I, what I do, my thinking about this is, not to have the wheel going round too fast. That's one. That's one important. Because you see, if the wheel is going round too fast, as you cut with the tool, the sh everything is coming off, and there's no time to think. There's no time to consider the form of the T-bowl, to consider the kind of foot that you might be wanting to, to put on the tee ball. So, I definitely don't like it going too fast. And the other thing is, what I like about a tee ball, in the foot of a tee ball, is when you carve it, to be able to see the nature of the cut clay exposed, and also, uh, a kind of decisiveness with the trim tool, not a hesitating cut, but a rather definite kind of cut, which is going to, combined with the slow wheel speed, is going to show the, the nature of the cut naked clay. And I, that's something which I, I, I like. So, in order to accomplish this, I try and get it, the tea bowl on center. Now I'm not going to be very fussed if it is just a little bit out. It doesn't bother me too much. I don't like it to be wildly out, but I like it to be on center. But if it isn't quite on center, I don't worry. Um, and then I have to do a, a minimal amount of, of trimming, really, but I have to be very, very decisive and to get to my objective as quickly as I can with a minimal amount of cutting.
don't know if that makes any sense. Are we in the picture? Are we in the picture? Uh, well, oh, okay, we'll zoom it in a touch. <clears throat> so, So I'm getting with a slow wheel speed a kind of spiral as I f cut down and the clay comes off in quite quite definite spirals you know as I say everybody you've got to develop your own method method for doing this you know And that's going to come by practice, isn't it? Practice? What is that? <laughs> well, that's just doing it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Yes, so. Da, 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 da. So I need to, f I need to feel the the thickness, because I, I don't want to leave it over thick. But when you're doing these kind of tea bowls, it's not a bad idea to just leave them a little generous in the wall or, or around the base here, because it allows you. Um, a little bit more leeway, doesn't it? Yes, sir. You know, in a way, I don't mind actually that, the, you know, you see the pot moving then. And in a way, I kind of don't mind when I'm doing these because it kind of gives me a breathing space. I do some cutting and then I just do a little recentering and then, but it's all, it all gives you a, a moment to, a little extra moment to think about what you're doing. And that's not a bad thing. I don't think. And that's it. That is it, folks. Well, let's just show you what I've been doing. As a... You see, there's a little bit of evidence there of the tool, of the cut, a little bit of a, a spiral there in the middle, you see. Well, I, I kind of like that, you know. Um, as I say, these 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 kind of pots, I'm trying to. These kind of pots, I'm trying to make them. So that I, I sort of feel 
Oh, hello, my old friend. How are you? <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> Let's have a cup of something together. <laughs> so yeah, these, there's these I've done. Uh, I've got some more to do. This one here, you see, has got the a bit of corn impressed in the side there to give a bit of give a bit of texture. Again, more corn, more corn. <laughs> This one doesn't have corn. This is a fairly um, it's kind of loose, isn't it? A looser sort of approach to throwing and to trimming. Sometimes a little bit of a irregular rim here on the top, which incidentally I um in the throwing of these in order to get an irregular rim um sorry put the focus back you know for a long time i i, I couldn't figure out how people <laughs> how people got these these irregular rims on their pots you know on their tea bowls and um the sort of wavy rims, you know, um, and uh, until I saw I saw somebody making making them, and I saw you know they threw the lump of clay and then they um, they, they 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 pulled it up a little bit, they centered it, opened it out, and pulled it a little bit, and then I saw them taking the clay and kind of lifting it like this and sometimes I saw people hitting the rims like this and I sort of thought oh so that's how they do it <laughs> and um, of course most of the pots that we make most of the pots that we make tend to have you know they're dead flat aren't they across the top because you know when we're lifting the clay we you know if there's any undulation there there is a tool that we reach for, isn't there? Don't know where mine is at the minute, but you know what I'm talking about. We take, we reach for our needle tool uh, to cut it off, you see, because we don't want this wobbly, uneven rim at the top. And, um, and that's, you know, for like say for a mug like this, made by my brother Johnny, uh, in England, um, this kind of mug you see does have just a, a, an, a an even wrap top to it, whereas our tea bowl is by nature a little bit more you know relaxed, and so it has a little bit of undulation on the rim, and I, I like that undulation, I have to say, and. Um, And that's how, and that's how, uh, that's how you get that that kind of undulation. These are some different pots that I threw, which were um, um, paddled and and expanded. These are waiting a little bit soft. These are paddled and then a little bit expanded. Um, So there you go, just a few thoughts on, on tea bowls and uh, and how to go about them, you know, that they, there's a lot of, they're all individual aren't they, they're all different, they're all, I'm just looking here on my shelf to see what I've got, you know, 
just as some other 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 examples. You can see the 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 the, the waviness of of the rim. Well, of course, that's why we're trimming on a on a, a chuck, you see, like this, so we don't put that rim face down on the wheel, but we're suspending it ab above the wheel, you see. So have a go, have a go at making some tea bowls, and um, try to try to get some some feeling into them, and um, some expression. Um, maybe not too much expression, but some expression, some subtle expression, you know what I mean? Um, subtleness, subtle expression. Yes. Okay, folks. Well, that's it. That's all. No more. <laughs> uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, please go visit my website, simonleachpottery.com for all sorts of bits and pieces. <laughs> Keep practicing. See you soon. La 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 la.